Endgame Thanos from 2014 is not the Thanos of 2018 to 2023. He's a younger Titan, and it seems that four years and a prophecy of inevitability can truly change a man. This Thanos is not truly complex. He's a villain who simply wishes to annihilate existence and reform it in his own image. A lot of people decry this version of Thanos, claiming he's a soulless rehash of a brilliant character that is nothing but a road bump for the film. I disagree. To a degree. While he is nothing to the original Thanos, I still rather enjoy Endgame Thanos. He is an entirely different character, for good reason. I finished the last installment of the series by mentioning how Marvel crafted the perfect fanboy villain. What I mean by that is, Thanos is actually a fanboy of himself. It's weird, but watch the film again. You may be shocked, but think about it. He watches himself on a hologram, likes what he sees, and then decides he can't let his idol down. He can't let himself down. He can't let his goal get undone by the heroes. It's sacrilege, and totally shaming his character arc. So he interferes and throws a wrench in the Avengers' plans by coming to the future to kill them all. What made me notice the true fanboyness of his character was when he ended up quoting himself when he believed he had the gauntlet and stones. I can attest to this fanboy behavior, because one of my favorite pastimes is quoting Infinity War Thanos at opportune and inopportune times. I snap all the time because I like the moment in Infinity War when he snaps. I also watched Thanos on some sort of viewing device and really liked his character arc, and argued that I'd be disappointed if Marvel went down some route where they tried to redeem Thanos through some way. It's funny, in a kind of sad way. In 2014 Thanos' mind, he is once again the hero. He's like the countless people who interpreted Thanos as a protagonist of Infinity War, and I don't really blame him. His death was by a whole ton of people ganging up on him for something that he that couldn't even be undone at that point, and he was soundly decapitated, alone, on his farm, in peace. It's kind of sad, but in a poetic sense. I didn't mention in the first video that Infinity War has a villain protagonist, but Endgame basically confirms it with how 2014 Thanos reacts to his death in the future. Another thing that makes this fanboy Thanos perfect for Endgame is the fact that Endgame is not a well-paced or well-plotted film like Infinity War. It's a nice love letter to the whole MCU, both its highs and lows. Who should end it all but the ultimate fan of the MCU itself, or at least its main villain. Now, why is this meta-breaking? Well, for the simple reason that's never really been done before in the MCU. And count the amount of evil fanboys I've seen done well on one hand. Endgame Thanos is one of them. Is he that complex? In a sense. He's learned, man. He realized something that he didn't before, despite all his planning. No matter how far he was, no matter how much better the universe would be, no matter how just he was in his actions of saving life and taking mo no more than needed, people would remember. People would be angry. They would want what they had no matter how much damage it did to them. They'd do anything to restore the imbalance, as all things shouldn't be. That's why he decided to reset. This universe would never accept the justice or truth of their situation, just like Titan, and thusly would eventually die out. That is why he could not allow it to continue to persist. He could not let life kill itself. He simply could not erase their memories, or they would make the same mistake again and again and again. Regardless, this universe was done, and not accepting its fate. So he simply had to annihilate this universe, start anew, with a universe teeming with life and resources, unaware of the truth. He's wrong, just as he was in Infinity War. Mass slaughter, and this time on a true universal scale, is morally wrong. However, this Thanos is seemingly even more sacrificial and willing to help the universe than his Infinity War appearance. I personally don't believe Thanos enjoys killing. Either one of them. He does it because he has to. In all honesty, if he was so eager to kill people, he would have done it. He would have killed Thor, he would have killed Stark, Parker, Quill, the Guardians, all of Wakanda. He would have killed every Asgardian and not ha let half escape with Valkyrie. He would have done this by slaughtering all the populations himself, as he easily could have. Thanos is almighty in terms of the MCU, with the possible exceptions being Odin, Hela, and Dormammu, and also, apparently, Captain Marvel. It would have been a simple task to go around and personally slaughter half of all life, except he doesn't. Even in Endgame, when he says he he'll kill them all personally, he doesn't. He could have easily killed them all and multiple times within their fight. He could have opened up by killing Thor while he was just standing there waiting for Cap and Tony. He could have casually tore Tony in half right here. He could have killed Cap anywhere before the Mjolnir amp and apparently even after based on the end of their fight. However, he doesn't. Thanos honestly didn't even truly need his army until the other army showed up. As Thanos alone would have been capable of beating everyone there except for Wanda, Carol, and Strange without the stones. Even with this, he does not kill in spite of him claiming he's going to enjoy this battle. He, he waited to kill anyone except for the rain fire when he himself was about to die. He wanted the snap to do it. In a sense, as personal as this was going to be for him, he didn't want to do it himself. He wanted to give them a snap death. A balanced death. And he said everyone. He said he was going to shred this universe down to its last atom. And then, with the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life, that knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. And that includes his beloved Gamora. Decades upon decades, upon, or possibly centuries of his work, and all of his planning was going to go away in an instant, a snap. 
because in his mind, that was the proper thing to do. Even after seeing himself visibly damaged by the usage of the Infinity Stones on a smaller task, only wiping half of all life, he still decides to go along with the ultimate sacrifice of what will probably be his life to establish a happy, healthy, and grateful universe. It's hard to see this because Thanos does not really have any true moments of open character growth like Infinity War where he cries. What he does have is little moments of solitude. Reflection. After watching the future version of himself get killed, who knows how many times, he understands that he himself is destined to do this, destined to die for the universe, and he is simply willing to do it. One of my favorite moments character-wise for this Thanos is when Endgame Thanos sits down and sends Nebula for the gauntlet. He sits down and does absolutely nothing until he is antagonized by the big three. We don't truly get a reason why he doesn't just do it himself, considering he easily could have just killed Thor before he summoned Mjolnir and Stormbreaker with a sword throw, been on his way to snapping away everything with no real threats after that since Captain Marvel and Strange would have certainly been too late. Even when I first watched it, I figured Thanos was taking time to reflect. To reflect on his past, to reflect on his plan, to steal himself for the upcoming task. That's why he takes his helmet off and plants his sword. This was not going to be a time for battle. It was a time for thought. He patiently waits, sitting down. I explained how Thanos sitting down talking to Gamora is one of my favorite scenes in Infinity War. Thanos sits down, doing nothing but thinking and waiting, one of my favorite scenes in Endgame. Not only does it simply imply an inherent superiority over our heroes, as he doesn't even have to be fully armored all the times and take them seriously, but it implies a sad air about Thanos. These are his last moments in the universe with everything he created and grew to love. That's why Thanos is not in a comfortable position like he was in the Gamora talk scene from Infinity War. He's in a contemplative pose, rationalizing his plan to himself and understanding that everything must be balanced, lest the future be ruined for life itself. In a way, he's sacrificing way more than his Infinity War self did. On a lighter note, another thing that continues as a trend from Infinity War is Thanos fighting like an absolute mad lad, and I love it. Thanos doesn't even have the Infinity Stones in the entire short war seen at the end of Endgame, yet this is still one of the best combat sequences in all the MCU. The way that Thanos gets absolutely ganged up on, and then turns around and just slowly but surely explains to the big three that he is the top dog is amazing. I said Thanos was holding back in Infinity War, and this really disproves it. A base Thanos with nothing more than an Uru sword was able to take on a bloodlusted, dual-wielding Thor, Cap, and a new suit Iron Man, all on his own, and even in a, even was on the verge of completely stopping one until Cap got the amp, only for Cap to still lose in the end. Then Thanos sort of just runs in with his full power throughout the entire battle. When Thor and Cap double-team him, he breaks free. Carol comes out of nowhere. He bodies her with a good old <laughs> And then the Power Stone. <laughs> Casually overwhelmed Black Panther. Even when Wanda first appears, he has the upper hand. Despite having a fraction of the screen time as Infinity War version did, he fought just as hard with even less work, and it's an amazing watch. Thanos just keeps pushing and pushing regardless of any roadblocks, willing to do anything to achieve his goal. However, leaving the fights, let's get to why I truly like this version of Thanos a lot. Yes, he is the ultimate fanboy, quoting himself from the future, living out his fantasy and bending the world to his will. Yes, he is a sad scientist who believes life can only persist if the reset button is hit. Yes, he fights like an absolute monster against titans of heroes with nothing more than a sword, their own weapons, and his own wit. But what makes Endgame Thanos one of my favorite characters is his end. I never mentioned how much I like the ending of Infinity War, when Thanos just sits down and looks at the sunrise on a grateful universe. Well, I do love that. So what I respect is how Thanos respects Tony's victory, the hero's victory. He does not go out screaming, he does not try to complain or argue or beg for his life. He just watches as everything he built crumbles around him. He walks over and sits down with one last sigh and a sad but understanding look on his face as the sun rose, rises behind him rather than in front of him. The sun set on his universe and he understands that as he goes without struggle. That, that is poignant. The main villain of your superhero movie does not go down in some violent or grand explosive death scene. They don't go out arguing to their last breath or screaming in agony. They just accept that. I know what it's like to lose feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail nonetheless. It's frightening. Turns the legs to jelly. If I ask you to what end? Dread it? Run from it? Destiny arrives all the same. And now it's here. Or should I say... I am. Hey, it's that guy with the pencil here to thank you for watching part two of Thanos Breaking the Meta. These two parts are a lot of fun to conceptualize and create, especially the endgame one, which is very much based on interpretation. I rarely see Thanos talked about in these ways, so thanks for watching. Next week, we'll get to another guy who happens to love throwing large rocks at people. This is that guy with the pencil, writing off.